my name is Keith Rucker and today I'm out at the Georgia Museum of Agriculture and once again we're working on the J.A. Vance uh, Planer Matcher restoration, a uh, long-term project that I've been involved in out here at the museum now for several months and probably quite honestly have several months to go on. I'm just a part-time volunteer. This is a project I've taken on so I'm not able to devote full-time efforts to this. This is just something I do on weekends in my spare time and whenever I can squeeze a few little minutes out uh, to work on this project. Uh, today, uh, what we're going to be working on is making some square head bolts uh, for this machine. And uh, I guess the first thing many people would probably ask is, why are you making bolts? I mean, something as simple as bolts. You can go to the hardware store and buy bolts. And while you're, you're absolutely right, you can. There are some unusual circumstances on many of the bolts on this, lay, on this machine that I'm restoring. Uh, in that they were originally a square head uh, bolt. Uh, the problem is is that the style bolt that I'm dealing with uh, you cannot go out and purchase anymore. This has a, this is a, the bolt I'm making today is going to be a half inch uh, bolt but it has a 5 eighths inch head on it. If you go out and buy bolts now uh, you can't get them like this anymore. This one right here is a, a square head set screw uh, but the head on it is a half inch. So it's, there's, it's not protruding, protruding out. It's not any bigger in diameter. They do make square head bolts such as this one uh, that you can commercially buy, but the head's too big on it and also too narrow, uh, not thick enough. Uh, the head on this one is a three quarter inch square and it only is uh, sticking up. Uh, you only have about a, let's see, let's measure that. That's uh, about three eighths of an inch uh, to put your wrench on there. Whereas the height of the head on the original bolt is really a half inch. So we're going to actually make uh, these bolts and of course as a comparison you know you have the normal hex head bolt uh, that you can buy uh, anywhere. So we're going to actually make some bolts just like they came off the machine. And again you may ask why? And uh, the reason is, is this is a restoration that we're doing for the museum out here. And while something as simple as a bolt may not seem like a big deal and to most people it's not a big deal. Uh, to me personally, when I get through this restoration, I want it to be as close to original as absolutely possible. And uh, it's the little details a lot of times that will make all the difference in a historic restoration. So using something as simple as the right bolts uh, can make a difference. And uh, for me, when the next person that's restoring this machine 100 years from now takes this apart, I don't want him to see something that says, well, that's, you know, that's obviously not original if they know uh, what they're looking at. So we are going to go to the trouble to make these bolts. Uh, on these half inch bolts, so there's another reason why we're, we're going to the trouble to do this. And that is, uh, back many years ago, the standards for bolts were not the same as they are today, uh, as far as threads and so forth. So anytime you're restoring and working on an antique piece of machinery, it's very important to actually check the threads to make sure of what you're dealing with. In today's world, uh, a half inch bolt is a half inch 13. So it'd be a half inch diameter and there'll be 13 threads per inch. On a lot of these old machines that I have worked on, uh, one thing that I commonly find on the half inch size, uh, they use half inch 12. And uh, I can tell you the first time that I ever discovered that, I was restoring a, an old bandsaw made about uh, in the, in the ni early 1900s, between 1900 and 1910. And I actually uh, was in the middle of the restoration. I had to send some parts off to have them cast. I had measured my bolts. I knew they were half inch. I tapped everything to half inch 13. I went to screw in uh, some, uh, some, uh, some pieces that weren't just a regular bolt, but it was a, a very specific uh, uh, shaft kind of that went into that. Uh, and lo and behold, it wouldn't thread in. And it, I sat there and scratched my head and scratched my head trying to figure out why. And I finally got my thread gauge out and realized that I had made a, a, a very bad mistake. I ended up having to make uh, a new part to fit in there that was threaded half inch 13, where if I had just measured my threads to begin with, I would have just tapped it half inch 12. You can still get a half inch 12 tap. In fact, I have one uh, that I use for cleaning up threads and uh, on when, I, when I, I run into these situations. So another reason why we're having to make these bolts, uh, go try to find half inch 12 bolts uh, out there in your standard places to look for bolts over on the internet or anything else. 
there are probably some places that may have some new old stock laying around, but nobody makes a half inch 12 bolt anymore. And uh, they, they do make in England a half inch 12 Whitworth thread, and some people will use those, but technically the, the angle of the thread is a little bit different than a 60 degree American thread and you really shouldn't use the Whitworth threads on, on uh, newer, newer stuff. So we're gonna have to make these bolts, that's the bottom line. Uh, but even on my more standard size threads across this machine, I am uh, also making those bolts because again, I'm interested in being historically accurate, which is the right size head, the right uh, thickness and the right height that I just cannot go out and buy a bolt off the shelf that will work. I have my square stock set up in the lathe over here to get ready and start turning this. And the first thing that many of you may notice is, is I'm using a four jaw chuck. And the reason is, is because I'm using square stock. And obviously square stock will not fit into a three jaw chuck uh, without making some type of special adapter. Uh, I knew when I was uh, started this project that I was gonna be making a lot of these uh, bolts uh, on the lathe by hand uh, out of square stock. So I actually went out and purchased a special uh, four jaw scroll chuck uh, which is like a three jaw chuck in that all four jaws will adjust in and out uh, together. Uh, there's a scroll in there that moves around. They all move in and out together. Whereas normally when you think of a four jaw chuck, you can uh, adjust each of the four jaws independently of one another for uh, being able to chuck up odd shaped uh, things or if you need to true something up that may not be perfect, running perfectly true. So this is not your standard four jaw chuck, this is a uh, four jaw scroll chuck. Uh, since I've had this, I've actually found this chuck to be very useful. I use it for a lot on this lathe uh, just for regular turning work. Uh, even though I have a three jaw chuck for this lathe, this is a 16 inch lathe that I'm running and the, the, the normal three jaw chuck that goes on here is rather large and when you're dealing with smaller parts it's just really difficult to use a really big three jaw chuck. So um, when I'm doing smaller work on here a lot of times I'll put this four jaw chuck on here uh, and use it like a three jaw chuck. Uh, it just has an extra jaw in there, it gives you a little bit extra grip but they do all scroll uh, independently of one another. I'm ready to start turning this now and, and there's about a million videos on YouTube on how to do threading on the lathe and I don't know that mine is going to be that much different uh, than a lot of the other ones out there but one thing that I have kind of done when I set up to do this job is, is I know that I've got to make multiples of this part uh, and normally uh, in a factory situation you would use a machine that's set up for doing production work. Uh, in the old days, they would have used a screw machine or a turret lathe for a job such as this. Uh, nowadays, of course, they just put on a CNC lathe, program it in, and it would just magically make the part. Uh, back when I was learning how to work in a machine shop, serving my apprenticeship in the late 1980s, uh, I was working in an old school machine shop, and we still actually ran a lot of turret lathes. And, uh, so, and because of that, the way my mind thinks is how a turret lathe would have done this job and uh, you'll probably see some elements of, of that mindset where I've got different tools set up for different jobs and I can easily move from one thing to the other and just crank this part out fairly easily. Uh, to start with uh, I just need to get my the depth of the thread and to do that I'm just going to lay the original bolt up here and you notice I have my cutter set to about the depth of the thread and I'm just going to turn my lathe on now, make a mark there and then I'll just turn it to a half inch diameter to that position.
Okay, I have that diameter down to just a few thousandths under a half inch. I like to make my bolts uh, just a little bit under nominal size. I find it just thread in a little bit easier. Uh, so that's about two thousandths under a half inch right there, which is just where I want to be. Uh, when I finish that last cut, I just pull it out and face the bottom of the bolt head uh, to have a good square surface underneath the bottom. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change out my tools and put in my threading tool, uh, and then we'll start the threading process. I'm using a uh, carbide insert threading tool here. Uh, you can grind it out of high speed steel, it works just as easily. I've got this nice threading tool here and uh, uh, I really like this because uh, if I need to change it out, it's just a loosen a screw, turn it around. Uh, I got three cutters on that one uh, tool right there. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive, but uh, in my situation where I'm doing a lot of one-off jobs, uh, it, it seems to just save me a little time. I like doing it. So I'm going to go in here first and just use that tool to champ from the bottom of the thread uh, to the uh, 60 degree angle of the thread. Uh, then we'll touch off and make a test pass, make sure we're cutting 12 threads per inch and go from there. take a second here to show how I get this lathe set up for cutting 12 threads per inch. Um, what you're looking at is the, the feed and lead uh, selector uh, for this lock and shift the lathe. And uh, to change it, you simply just pull this throw out lever over here and you can rotate this around to find what you're looking for. And uh, we're looking for 12 threads per inch That's right here. Uh, if you look right here, the B and 12, uh, the level B is, is at 12, or the fitness and lever selection B, it'll be feeding 12 uh, threads per inch in threading mode. Uh, and you also, you can do in this mode, depending on this selector level here, you can do 6, 12, or 24 threads per inch. Uh, to do 12, you put it in the B. So this is A, B, and C. So we would just put this over. Uh, in that position for B. Um, if you're in thread mode, uh, which is just a little different selector over on the carriage, uh, you can either be doing 7.8 thousandths per revolution, 15.6 thousandths, or 31.3. Uh, I have this set up right now where when I'm doing my turning, I'm at 7.8 thousandths in the C selector and using uh, the, the threading uh, lead screw on the machine, and when I get ready to do my uh, threading, I just move my lever over to B. I use my threading lead screw on the lathe, and uh, I'm, I'm doing 12 threads per inch. Uh, I could be probably turning a little bit faster on my feed, but this way I don't have to come over here and change my dial selector every time. I've got you zoomed in now on the carriage on this uh, Lodge and Shipley Model X lathe. And, uh, just to show you again a little bit about uh, the settings and controls on this. This uh, right here basically just will, it's for quickly moving the entire carriage in and out. Uh, of course, this lever here moves the saddle in and out and you can adjust the compound uh, with this lever up here. Uh, we have two levers here that control the feed to engage the feed of the machine. Uh, the first one here, when you engage that, it's going to adjust the carriage for going in and out. Uh, this one here, if you engage that, will actually engage the feed on the cross slide, the cross feed going uh, perpendicular to the uh, work. Okay. Uh, we also have down here a lever. This is uh, for your, your feed. It basically engages and disengages the feed. Uh, there's three positions. The bottom position will be feeding in toward the uh, spindle, which is the normal way you would be uh, feeding most of the time. 
However, if you get into a situation where you want to go feet away from, sometimes if I'm turning on the inside of something up against a, a, a larger diameter, I've, I have to feed in the opposite direction, feed to the right rather than to the left. Uh, that's how you would basically reverse the feed without reversing the spindle on the machine. And then if you put it in the center, that's uh, neutral. That's going to base. That's going to disengage the feed uh, on the machine altogether. Uh, this handle here is what will engage and disengage the half nut uh, for threading. Uh, when you are threading on this machine, it's very important that you have to have uh, the the feed in neutral, where it will, you cannot engage the feed. Uh, there's actually two. Uh, screws on this lay or one one screw here this is for this will be because this uh, this rod here will be for the threading uh, this rod up underneath it which has a keyway in it will control the, the feed so you actually have two different uh, uh, feed rods I'm not sure the correct term for that uh, uh, off the top of my head but that's what's, what's going to engage and disengage the carriage going back and forth so one is for threading and one is for your feeds um, uh, on this machine, which is a little bit different than a lot of lathes. A lot of lathes would just have one uh, carriage screw that will do both, whereas this one has both. So again, you must put this in, in neutral to be able to engage and disengage your half nut for threading. Uh, the lever down here uh, controls the, the, the actual direction of the, of the chuck. So if you pull it up, you're going in forward, put it in halfway down is neutral, and you push it down as in reverse. So it has three positions in there, and that's how you control uh, the reverse uh, and forward on the chuck itself. It's all right here on the carriage. As long as I'm explaining all the uh, controls on this Model X uh, Lodge and Shifty Lay, I thought I'd go ahead and also talk about the speed of the uh, of the spindle itself. And, uh, there's two, or actually three, uh, levers here that can. Uh, that. And there's this really nice uh, slide rule up on the top uh, that will tell you the position of your levers uh, to get uh, the different uh, spindle speeds. And another nice feature of this is, uh, is it will tell you the cutting speed in feet per minute uh, at that RPM, so at that, at that speed, based on the diameter of the works. It's a little slide rule here. So. So let's just uh, say that we're running at 136 RPMs. Uh, we can quickly look down this uh, scale here. And let's say that we've got a, few, a, a three, in, three inches in diameter. I can look on here and tell that that's turning at 107 feet per minute, uh, which is very nice if you're trying to uh, match up uh, a, a speed based on the diameter of the work, based on the type of cutter that you're using, uh, you can real quickly use this little slide rule tool here to uh, determine what speed you need to be running at. So if you were looking at for something at a, for a diameter, you could just slide this along, look at that diameter, and find the cutting speeds in the RPM that matches that. Uh, if you also, if you look up at the top here, it shows you the lever positions uh, for a particular uh, RPM. To show you how I'm running the lathe uh, for this particular job, for threading, I'm running at 64 RPM. And you can see the lever positions uh, where one lever is up, one lever, the center lever is, is at, a, we'll call that at, at, at 1.30, this is at 3 o'clock, and then uh, the uh, second lever on the right is over at about 11 o'clock. And if you see me zoomed out now, and when I zoom out, you'll see that that's exactly the lever positions I have. Uh, for turning, uh, I, I have again, just for a quick shortcut, I just have it where I just adjust this one fitting over here. I, I scoot that over to the setting there uh, at the three o'clock position, or excuse me, about two o'clock position. And when I slide my slide rule over, for, for just turning, I'm running at 295 RPMs, or about 300 RPMs. I like to cut threading pretty slow. If I was just turning and, and not doing any threading, I'd, I'd, I'd probably run my, my spindle speed up a little faster than what I'm doing, but uh, for cutting threads, I like to go slow, and uh, that 64 threads, uh, or 64 RPMs, just seems to work pretty good for me. So with that little bit of explanation, now we're back to our threading job, so we'll go ahead and get started.
So to start off, I'm just going to move the cutter in just close enough to where I'm barely cutting on the piece. I'm going to cut a test cut, uh, really not even cutting, just scratching the surface and check that with my thread gauge to make sure that I am on 12 threads per inch. enough so this first pass is going to be a very light skim pass and I'm going to go in and check that measurement with a thread gauge to make sure that uh, I'm actually cutting thread gauge for it. Once that is done, uh, or once I move it into that, that first initial cut, I'm going to set my thread gauge to zero and my dial on my cross feed to zero so that I can go back to this position at any time. Now I'm going to wait for my red gauge to come around to any mark this on it. Uh, for even, uh, even number threads, uh, you can engage the half nut to any mark on the thread gauge. For odd thread numbers, you have to use a number uh, mark on the, on the thread gauge. So we will wait until we get to that first uh, mark on the line uh, on the thread gauge and then we'll engage the half nut. As it approaches the shoulder, I disengage the half nut and I make sure that it cuts a full revolution so that I'm getting a, uh, that thread's going to cut all the way around in that spot. Some people will back the dial out at this point because I'm actually threading right up to the shoulder. I'm going to let it cut all the way around. At this point, I'm going to check my thread with the thread gauge. I stop the spindle. Have my thread gauge set on 12. I lay that on top of the little tiny threads that were cut and just look at my eye to make sure they match up and they do. I'm cutting 12 threads per inch. At this point, I'm just going to back my thread gauge out, move the carriage out to the end of the work, move my cross slide back into zero, and then using the compound slide, which is set at about 29 and a half degrees, I'm going to move it in about 5,000 or so for my next cut. All of my feed is going to go in on the cross slide, or excuse me, on the compound slide, and I'm going to use the, uh, the, the, the cross slide just to get back to zero on every cut. I'm now ready to make my second pass. I'm going to put a little oil on here.
we're getting very close now to the um, the final cut on here and, and that's another trick when cutting threads is knowing when to stop and uh, there's a lot of different ways of doing this some people will set up a dial indicator on here to check the depth of that cut because uh, you, you can't really read it directly off the dial because the, the compound is set at an angle uh, when you feed it in five thousandths the depth is not actually going in five thousandths so you really need to put a dial indicator on the back side of your block and then you can actually measure that if you want to my method though is just to do a test fit and uh, in most of the situations it's really not that critical that it be you know plus or minus a thousandth or two so I would just take a, a nut or the part that I'm making it for and test fit it on there. Because this is a half inch 12 though, I don't have a half inch 12 nut laying around, but I do have a part off the machine that I have cleaned up with a, a tap uh, that I know is the right size. Uh, so I'm just gonna run that down through there and use this kind of as a nut and check that final uh, fit. So we're just gonna spin this on or try to, and it starts on and actually, uh, uh, that's a little bit tighter than I like. So I'm going to just take probably just a couple of thousandths more off of that, and uh, we should be ready to go. step of uh, making this uh, bolt and that is we're going to part it off uh, to the proper length and to use to part it off I'm not using a regular parting tool I, I actually cut a, a high speed steel uh, tool here ground to a angle on the, uh, the top I have and the reason is, is if you look at the bolt there's a little bit of crown across the top of that bolt and just knocks some of the corners off so I'm going to make all that in one pass with a special kind of parting tool that I have on here. I'm just going to eyeball the, uh, the depth of that. I've noticed on this machine all these heads are, all, are just slightly a different size, so I'm not too critical about having a perfect uh, head thickness. I just want to be close, so I use the original bolt as a guide uh, to set that thickness. There's the final bolt. Got a little bit of a tip there on the top. I'll just take that over and uh, on the grinder and knock that off. And uh, you can see I've made a bolt. There's the original one that I'm copying uh, very close to it.
So there's the process I'm using to create these uh, bolts on the uh, manual lathe. Um, I made a bunch of these bolts a while back uh, for another part on the machine. And uh, I, I started timing myself once I kind of got my procedure down. And it was taking me about seven to eight minutes uh, per bolt uh, to make it this way. And I think those bolts were a little bit longer than these. So it really depends on the size that I'm making. Uh, but you can see it's, it's, it's fairly fast. Obviously not nearly as fast as what you do on a production machine. Um, if I had a turret lathe set up to do this job, basically doing the same steps that I'm using here, except uh, instead of chasing the threads the way I'm doing, I would use a die head that would just come in in one pass and uh, the die would just feed down and get to a depth and pop out and it would cut all those in, in one easy step. But on a turret lathe, you could probably set these up to make hundreds of them uh, over and over and over again. Uh, again, basically using the same process I just used and it would probably take maybe, maybe a minute or two at the very most uh, per bolt uh, to crank these out. Uh, prob really, you could probably do it in less than a minute uh, with getting everything set up just right. So a turret lathe, you can really knock some parts out like this. And of course, uh, on a modern CNC lathe, it would probably even be faster than that. Uh, but again, uh, that's the process I'm using uh, for making these bolts. Uh, I have quite a few of these uh, to make on this machine. I've already made quite a few and I still have quite a few to go. I only have four of these to make today. Uh, and normally it would only take me maybe, uh, you know, less than an hour to make those four bolts. Uh, but uh, taking the time out to do this video, it's, it's going to take me probably half an hour at the day to, to make them because I had to slow down to, to show you guys this process. But uh, I thought it's worth mentioning. And again, um, you know, this is by no means the only way you can do threading on the lathe. There are some other tricks, tricks out there. Uh, there's some plenty of good videos out there on YouTube uh, to see how to do this. I'd encourage you to look at some other ones uh, because you just looking at other machinists, you learn different tricks. I look at these other videos because I learn from other guys. I don't have any monopoly on knowing everything. And, and even if there's something that I know how to do very well, I, I, I can see someone else and see their take on it and just learn a little trick uh, that might help me uh, down the road. So uh, Keith Finner has some good videos on his website at, at Turnright Machine Works. So uh, uh, I'd encourage you to take a look at his channel and uh, Mr. Pete, uh, Pete 222, or Mr. Pete 222, uh, Tublican, Tublican, he has uh, also some good uh, introductory videos on how to do threading and a lot of other things uh, in the machine shop. So those are two channels that, that if you're, particularly if you're new to machine shop work, uh, give them a look and see how these other guys do it and uh, they probably have a little bit different take on it but again this is how I do it. So there you go that's how I make some bolts. Uh, good luck go out get your hands dirty and uh, do it on your own.